08459 four double five five double five. In just a week's time, over 500 million people will go to the polls to elect MEPs to the European Parliament. It's like Eurovision, but a bit more important. They make decisions about many parts of our lives, from the cars we drive to the food we eat and the places we travel. Now, some people don't like that. Some people would rather we had full control of those decisions ourselves. So, what are the benefits and what are the negatives of being part of the EU? Petros Vasoulas is chair of the European Movement and Rory Brumfield is director of the Better Off Out campaign group. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Petros, why should we be in Europe? Because Europe is a platform for us to achieve our ambitions. It's the place where we come together with 27 other European nations to do things together that are better done as a group than individually, uh, be it on trade, economic cooperation, but also the little things that matter to people, like the, the safety of the water we drink when we are on holiday or the, the quality of the hospitals we use when we are abroad for work. It makes trading cheaper, it makes our life easier. But the, the, the quality of the water in France and what a Spanish hospital is like, that's not going to affect that many people in, in Britain, is it? Of course it does. They, other than the fact that there are about 2 million Brits uh, living currently around the European Union, there are millions of them going through the Europe on business or leisure. Uh, it is quite significant. But it also, we shouldn't forget that it also provides prosperity and peace around our continent. And it has done so for over 60 years, something that affects us directly on a daily basis. Rory, I'm guessing as, as a director of the Better Off Out campaign, you, you disagree. I do, I'm afraid. Um, I do on the basis that, actually, in terms of uh, Petros mentioned its ambition, um, I think uh, many people around the UK want ambition to have jobs, and I see the EU as a job destruction machine, uh, where regulation coming from the European Union is uh, changing the business makeup of the United Kingdom in a way that we wouldn't want it to change, and uh, stopping small and medium-sized enterprises creating that uh, business wealth and driving forward uh, the growth in jobs. How, how is it stopping, Roy? Because unemployment figures are down. There was a, a report mm. last month that uh, more and more people, are, uh, entrepreneurs, are starting up their own business. So how do you reach that conclusion? Well, that is wonderful news, but I would say I want more. Um, we would have more uh, jobs, we would have more opportunities, and looking forward, uh, we have a global economy that's booming, and a European Union that is stalling on trade agreements, uh, which we can't negotiate ourselves. Uh, but more fundamentally than that, the regulations that are coming out of the European Union are stopping businesses uh, from competing. And uh, as a result, uh, we can't generate the more jobs and more growth and more opportunities that I want to see for the British people. Actually, I think it's the exact opposite, if I may come in. Please uh, do. We have replaced 28 set of rules with ones. In effect, simplifying the regulatory book, making it easier for small and medium-sized enterprises to trade across borders. Uh, 40% of our trade is with other European nations. That amounts to about 4 million jobs that are linked to that trade. So jobs are created over here because it's easier for British business to do trade across the European Union. What? And, you know, the, the global but economy is a well. very, very big place. When we are part of a community of 28 nations, we, can, we have more influence and we can strike better deals. We're negotiating one with the US now. We wouldn't be able to negotiate the same good terms if we were on our I own. I disagree. Uh, the UK, US trading relationship is very strong, stronger than any other EU nation. And the fact that we haven't got a free trade deal up until now is ludicrous uh, on the basis that we have had this relationship over many years and uh, it should be very easy uh, for the Chancellor of the Exchequer and David Cameron uh, to go over and make this deal. Petros, lots of money is spent on the EU. It does cost us a fortune to be part of it. Can you understand why people don't think they're getting value for money? Well, in fact, uh, I will challenge that premise. Uh, less than 1% of our GDP or our collective wealth is uh, contributed to the EU budget and about 80% of that goes back to citizens. To give you an analogy, only 40% of the UK budget goes back to you and me, whereas 80% of the EU budget goes back to EU citizens. And as I said, it's just 1% of our GDP. And, and for that, we get access to the biggest market in the world. We are, we are partners with countries like Germany and France, world leaders around the world. So Rory, it's a good, it's a good investment. 
Uh, I disagree because the regulations that we are sponsoring, such as the Common Agricultural Policy, are increasing the food prices for everyone across the UK and the European Union by up to 17%. Now, this represents over £500 on the average family's uh, grocery bill a year and is a disgrace. It's something that we wouldn't have if we were outside the European Union. And it, I would expect us to have cheaper, better quality food uh, at a reasonable price. Here's the thing, chap. Right. I consider myself kind of fairly well read. And I haven't got a clue. I don't know what, what the best situation is, whether to be in or out. I tend to believe the last person I've heard speaking. Petros, uh, why, why should people be interested and how can they make an informed decision? Well, I think information is key here, and unfortunately for far too long we haven't had the debate. It's, it's a great pleasure that you are giving me, Roy, the opportunity to make the argument so people can inform the decisions. Because as far as I'm concerned, whether you believe in membership of the European Union or not, it's a very important matter. It's one that our, the future of our country depends on. And also, our, our standing in the world depends on, and we are affected on a, on a daily basis by it. So it's imperative to have the debate as much as possible. Rory, do you think that the, uh, uh, the common man and woman is actually that interested in whether we should be in and out of Europe, or is it a media construct? Well, I, I think uh, they are interested on the basis that it affects their everyday life. Um, I just mentioned food prices there. Energy costs is another thing that comes from the EU and uh, drives up energy bills in the UK. That is not true. Um, well, it is true. How is it? How is it? Uh, carbon capture regulations to do with uh, shutting down power stations, the, the, state aid rules. There's an example here in Hinkley Point where state aid rules are stopping the UK investing its own money in its own energy production. Now, this is from the European Union. It's delaying a project so critical to the UK and its energy provision. On the contrary, we have open markets in the European Union creating more competition, making energy cheaper and we're in the process of getting closer in energy cooperation to provide more security for ourselves. We see what's happening in, in Ukraine. A country mm. like Russia which Very is a, it's a net exporter of, uh, of energy can bully around nations. When we pull together we're able to stand up to countries like that secure our energy sources and provide our people with cheaper and more reliable sources of energy. Petros, the if, not the Ukraine. Petros, if, if we were to pull out of Europe as a, a significant number of people want, what effect would that have on Britain? Well, first of all, it will be the economic effect. Uh, as I said, foreign investors come over to the UK creating jobs and building factories because we are part of the single market. Outside of the single market, whatever products are produced here will suffer from a tariff when entering the European Union. Then, then I think it's the, the standing. We, we are able to project our interest around the world better when we are part of a big group. And, and of course, I think it's the values uh, argument too. The Brits view themselves as open entrepreneurs who believe in democracy, who believe in, in free trade, and the European Union is a manifestation of that belief. Rory, you, you're, you're from the Better Off Out campaign. How would mm. we be better off out? Well, as I say, it's the opportunity to create more jobs. It's the opportunity to enhance our links. Now, we do more trade with the Commonwealth now than we do with Eurozone nations. And the idea to enhance that, uh, I think, and glo be global in our outlook is uh, something that we should act on and on the basis that what's best for British interests rather than what's the best for European Union interests. One doesn't cancel out the other. We, we can trade with the rest of the world while we're trading with Europe too. And in effect, the CBI has said that the European Union is springboard for our business to go out there and trade with the rest of the world. Our supply chains go through, through Europe. Our ability mm, yeah, to compete in the world is improved thanks to our membership of the European Union. Gentlemen, we have to end it there. We are out of time. I appreciate uh, your considered thought this morning. That's uh, the last voice you heard there was Petros Fasoulas, chair of the European Movement, and Rory Broomfield, who is director of the Better Off Out campaign group. 